What, physically or in the in the ether? <laughs> like, where's um, I live in Bristol, yeah. um, so uh, the best place to kind of find out where and where and what I'm doing is um, I have a website which is www.phil-king.net, um, and I have you know all the standard. I have a Facebook page, a YouTube channel with some videos on it. The music is available to mail order either through my website or to download from iTunes. Um, what else is there? Spotify, the albums are on there. Bandcamp. All those kind of places, yeah. Bandcamp, SoundCloud, SoundCloud. Yeah. Reverb Nation, <laughs> Pinterest, Everywhere. Tumblr. Yeah, I've lost track. And Twitter, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a relatively recent Twitter convert. Can you get, I can't get into that. It's wicked. I think the thing that's difficult for me with it is you know I'm, I'm on there to promote what I do that's, yeah. that's the main reason yeah. why I'm on there and so I've kind of like I don't know, I, what's the, I, I don't know how many how many people folks usually follow mm. but I'm following like 200 people you know yeah. like I've chosen Quantum. festivals that yeah. I like and yeah. DJs that yeah. I like and, and other musicians but I never learn anything from it because there's just so much Information coming through that yeah. it's impossible to see it. All. Yeah. So I go on. I go on about it once a day and, yeah. and write something, yeah. which also goes on my Facebook page now. Oh, yeah. But it, but I think the thing that I'm noticing is it, is it does work. You know, I've mm. found a new audience through it, yeah, yeah. Um, and because people can retweet stuff yeah. quite easily, uh, one thing about information about a gig will yeah. go out to more people than I could previously reach and yeah. this kind of ties back in with what we were talking about earlier yeah. you know I don't know how old Twitter is but ten, four years ten years ago yeah exactly Not no Facebook no yeah. Twitter no MySpace yeah. you had emails yeah but you know the game has changed yeah. how old's iTunes now I'd probably scare myself by finding out how old I is <laughs> iTunes ten years old yet well, King Dave, you know I reckon it, it is. I remember buying something of it in 2002. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if you go back 15 years before you even had the ability to, you know, get an income stream through online music sales, you know, it's, yeah. it's such a massive change yeah. to the way that people can, yeah. you know, being a self-employed musician now, you have, I mean, obviously there's loads more people doing it, yeah. so the competition yeah. is higher, but it must be a dream. you can yes. do it yeah. on your own. Yeah. yeah. And you know, if you think about bands used to just get in the back of a van and drive around the country and yeah, yeah. without anybody really knowing that they were coming, yeah. <laughs> it seems now when you think about yeah. Yeah. now they're in bands with sat nav tweeting to a thousand people yeah. on the yeah. way. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So so yeah, I think I'm very lucky and I need I need to maybe like be a bit more conscientious about using that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I hear about these things called music glue and stuff, mm -hmm. which I don't know if you know about that. It's, mm -hmm. sounds amazing, but um, uh, for me it's it, I have to be dragged into it. It's not like a natural <laughs> process yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but you know, if you're starting out now, if you're like a teenager starting yeah. out in the music industry now, it's uh, sick oh, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Ah, dear. Oh, talking about that, actually, Facebook page for us, live from the Royal. You can see King Day filming it at the moment, and it'll be on there. And also, if you want to download this session, it'll be on www.choiceradio.org.uk with the whole other 95 artists. Yeah. So there you go, if you're getting bored in the hospital, things to do. Um, influences, Phil? My goodness. There's a lot. How long an answer would you like? Go on, as long as you like. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> waffle on this is lovely. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, uh, I have a really, really strong memories of um, the first kind of music that really moved me, that I really kind of before that music was just kind of like a background mm. thing and then um, my folks took me and my brother to go and see Eric Clapton at the Albert Hall and that was my first experience of like a yeah. you know, big concert yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I loved that experience, mm. that was great, you know, I was like 11 or something mm. and that, that was amazing. And then, so I kind of looked into what he was doing and realised that a lot of the songs that he was playing he didn't write and that they were old blues yeah. tunes and they were, he was playing like Ray Charles tunes and he was playing old like Muddy Waters songs and then he made an amazing album where he played those of Robert Johnson tunes. And so I got, I got into blues and, and there was something about that early, the 
the solo acoustic blues players from you know like the 30s mm -hmm. that just bowled me over yeah. um, so for years you know I, I listened religiously to a lot of that and became fascinated with the whole Alan Lomax recordings that are now part of the American Library um, and so I guess that, that was the starting point and people like Robert Johnson particularly, I think, was a strong influence on me. And John Lee Hooker had a, oh, had a big yeah. impact on me, something about the quality of his voice just that I could just listen to it over and over again. And then when I was a bit later, um, somebody introduced me to jazz, and um, I remember getting hooked on people like Anna Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday and Sarah Vaughan um, and Nina Simone. And uh, Chet Baker I think, is an incredible... Uh, interpreter of those that whole standards thing and something about the quality of his voice which I just find haunting and beautiful and then I got into soul music and loved that Motown the solo male artists uh, you, you know the Otis Reddings and Al Greens and Marvin Gaye's and Curtis Mayfield's all that it was flawless um, but now the people that I listen to most now are probably uh, people that occupy an acoustic American alt country Americana kind of scene. So there's a guy called A. A. Bondi who I'm uh, just I can't stop listening to his music. Um, he's signed to Loose Music in the UK. Um, he's made three albums and he's incredible and he's. Uh, he used to be in a band called Ver Verbena or something mm -hmm. like that, which was much more electric, punky, kind of indie rock, grungy stuff. But now he, he's made three beautiful acoustic albums. Uh, I love him. Connor Oberst, who is um, in a band called Bright Eyes, and also he has a band called The Mystic Valley Band. Um, and he's released one solo album just under his own name. Uh, pretty much everything that he does, I think, is incredible. Um, some Ryan Adams stuff. Uh, he's an artist which he can either like blow me away mm. or, or can leave me a bit indifferent, but his, his good stuff mm. is, is incredible. Um, Gillian Welch and Dave Rowlings, I absolutely love what they do. Um, and bands like the Old Crow Medicine Show, who are kind of very closely linked to all those guys. Mm. And from listening to this kind of music, you know, going back to people like Dylan and the band, mm. and recently bands like Little Feet and the, mm. that kind of. Yeah area where you have it's all for me it all is based around the, the sound of a guy with an acoustic guitar mm. but then you put drums and bass and some hammond organ and piano and then either like electric guitar or a pedal steel or something just but it's all for me it's all based around a song that some guy's playing on an acoustic guitar it all comes down to that for me but yeah um far and wide i mean not not that many recent artists in the UK that I can think of. I mean, I really I like some of Laura Marling's stuff, and I love The Villages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's another Connor. I can't remember his surname. Mm. Another Connor, mm. anyway. Mm. Um, he's made two albums now. I think they're both great. Um, yeah. Yes. That's, that's a decent answer. Yeah, that's that is, that is a whole <laughs> that album there. Yeah. <laughs> Music from the 30s. Yeah. Up is there only one, one person that's influenced you in your, in your music career? So one person close to you? That's kind of. Uh, I've had quite a lot of, quite a lot of people that I, I would have said have been, yeah, very important to me. Um, probably early on, uh, it, it's it's going to be like a, you know people in Bristol primarily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I remember when I first started thinking about getting back into music. There was a guy called James Forster who I set up a band with, um, who was an incredible guitar player yeah. and we had our early experiences of, of, of music with that introduction through Eric Clapton to the blues and then into jazz and soul mm -hmm. were, were identical yeah. um, and so he yeah he gave me a lot of encouragement and working with him was an incredible experience yeah. um, and then I was kind of starting out doing my own stuff at the same time as two other people in Bristol, one guy called Pete Rowe mm -hmm who um, yeah. plays in Laura Marling's band now and, and released his own album this year, yeah. I think. It's called My Beloved Bubble or something mm -hmm. like that. 
but we did a lot of gigs together and we discovered people like Dylan and the band together and played covers of their stuff and, and then there was a girl called Beth Rowley as well oh, who, nice. um, yeah who was Mercury no, no sorry she was Brit nominated mm. a couple of years ago yeah. um, and all three of us kind of starting out at the same time in Bristol and having people like that around you yeah. was, a, was a really great kind of and still is, yeah, because yeah. I still know that they're out there doing their yeah, thing yeah. and that they're having success and they're yeah. touring and they're releasing. Having people like that is, is, is great. Yeah. And then occasionally, you know, when you, I do a lot of shows like I did today yeah. where you know, you'll be on a mixed bill somewhere and you'll hear people that you, you don't know and occasionally you'll hear somebody that will just... You know, you'll, yeah, mm. just, it'll just blow you away. Mm. And there's mm. a few people like that. There's a guy called Peter Bruntmore who's from mm. North Devon. Mm -hmm. North Dorset, North Devon, yeah. somewhere near Bridgewater, I think. Right. Who, uh, I think he's incredible. He, he he has some quality that he embodies, which to me is what mm. music's about. Um, and then uh, there's a singer in London called Julia Beale, who I've done some touring with. Who there's not that many people that I think I could go on tour with, but she's she's one of them. <laughs> Uh, partly because she's a lovely person, but her music is fantastic. Her songwriting is great. Yeah. She's got a very um, rec immediately recognisable voice. I'm not going to say unique, but yeah. she, she's got she's got a quality which is in instantly recognisable as being her. Yeah. Um, and I, I find that experience very inspiring. So yeah, it's, it's mm. a bit of a bit of name dropping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah why not? <laughs> What about someone listening to this who's thinking of going into the music business? Any tips for them? I find that really hard. I get mm. asked that quite a lot. Mm. Um, I find it really hard because no, nobody else in the music industry is going to be having the same experience as me, and there might there might not be anybody that has the same aspirations as me. I think I think it's such a it's such a big thing that the 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 thing which made a difference for me was sitting down and focusing on exactly what I was doing and what I wanted to do within the huge spectrum of possibilities mm. that there were for that and it's like we were talking about earlier do I want to go out and get signed mm. to the point where I'm you know occupying the same kind of places I, I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself now because I'm not, I'm not really up on the modern commercial music scene but you know people like David Gray or James mm. Morrison or that kind. Of, do I want to? Do I want that? Mm. Or do I not care about that at mm. all? And depending on what your answer is to that question, how much are you prepared to compromise what you're doing in order to achieve it? Mm. Does writing matter more to you than performing, or are you, do you, are you happy to get up and sing any covers or have songs that other people have written for you because they'll get you somewhere else? Mm. I think all of those questions are are important, and they're. They're huge questions, yeah. and when I started thinking about them, I, I wasn't sure what the answers were. Mm. You know, it takes a bit of time to kind of chew all that stuff over. Mm. But I'm I'm now quite clear about the fact that songwriting is massively important to me, and probably more important than the performing element of it. Of it. So I don't want to be a signed artist that sings other people's songs. I want to do my own thing, and I'm not prepared to compromise that in order to achieve more renown or more financial or commercial success. Um, so making decisions like that I think are really important. Mm. But then also, uh, we've got a nice, lots of nice linking in of our questions mm. today. Uh, you know, be, be aware of all of these tools that are available to mm. you. And I think this is the great thing about having, having access to hundreds of times more people than we used to is that whatever, you're, whatever music you're doing, however niche it might be or how alternative it might be, you can find a, a, a decent sized audience now, mm. not restricting just to the town that you live in. Yeah. You know, you could be doing something totally weird and avant-garde and, you know, that, that you wouldn't find a big enough audience base in your town to support mm. it. But nationally or globally, you can. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just that. Be as clear as possible about what you want to do. Be open to the tools that are available to you to use to get your music out there and find your audience. And obviously, it's, without trying to sound really cheesy, it's, you've got to enjoy it. Haven't you? Exactly. It's, it's got to be fun. Yeah, of course it is.
and it has been the fun today and it still is. Time for song number four. Cool, okay. Yeah. I'm going to play um, another tune off of the album now. This is called The War I Cannot Win. 